today I'm going to be sharing some tips on color mixing. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. Many of you guys know Nick Edgar. He helps moderate our art groups and the live streams and has a channel here on YouTube. I'll have a link to that in the video description. So Nick has been having a problem. Let's take a look at what's going on. Hi Lisa, it's Nick. We've talked about it and you know that I suck at mixing paint in a, I just do. Um, I've only I've only done a couple acrylic paintings, uh, but the ones that I've done, I notice I spend way more time and waste more paint um, mixing, trying to mix a color. I, I get it to go one way, and then I put more more. It needs to be lightened up, so I put way too much white in it, and then I have too much, so I got to try to mix it all back again to get back. It, it, I I just I make a mess. I'll I'll show you in a second, but I need some help with a workflow. I don't know where to start mixing a color. Um, do I start with the dark and lighten it up or do I start light and darken it up? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I was hoping you could help me with that. So let me show you how I do it. Okay, so there's the, the color I'm trying to mix. And this is what I get. This is... <laughs> I don't even know why I put these colors down here. I know I want blue. I, I never know what to start with, but... I never know where to put them. I don't, I don't know any of that. So I know from looking at it, I guess that's the one I want to start with. And that's too blue. So I think I want to warm it up with some of that. And that looks like an ungodly muddy mess already. One eternity later. But you see how it's uh, how I got there, and I end up and I end up with a teeny little amount of paint that I can use. It's that's close to the color that I want. It's not. It's close enough. It's better than I've gotten, and all this stuff I really can't use unless I use some of this to make more of it. But I just feel like I'm wasting too much paint and wasting too much time trying to get to a color. Help! The first thing that I noticed when you mixed your colors, you mixed a blue tone with what looked like a raw sienna. Now raw sienna, I consider that more of a brownish tone than a reddish tone, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Well, what happens if you mix blue and brown? You get black. So in your case, that's how you ended up with that initial muddy sort of greenish color instead of the lavender you were going to. Now you ended up being able to mix it to the color you wanted, so that worked out fine. And that kind of leads me to my next point. People contact me regularly asking, what color do I use to mix this tone? What color to mix a to paint a tiger? What color? Th there's no one right answer. You can give me a whole bunch of different colors of paint. I can come up with the same end result or near the same end result 20 different ways with 20, you know, a, just a handful of different color combinations. So you, when you're mixing, the easiest thing to do is don't worry about getting the perfect, perfect start colors that you're, you're or base colors that you're starting with. Just limit them as much as possible. In your case, you started with such a huge amount of colors to choose from. I think that makes it more confusing. And I think that's why you go through so many different variations of the color you want. Simplify it. So let's look really quick at the color we're going to be mixing today. This is a sort of lavender color. If we look, I'm gonna take this into Photoshop, use the color matching tool or the, the eyedropper tool. Notice where this color falls on that. We are somewhat of a grayish tone. It, it's closer to the left side of the, the little box there, and it's, it has more white than black. So right off the bat, I know I'm gonna use black and white. Whenever I'm using a, a more muted grayish tone, I shouldn't say all the time, but more often than not, an easy way to do this is to start with black and white. I know this is a grayish tone based on where that is on that color tool. Now there are, as you found, a different ways to get there, but this I think can help simplify it sometimes. So we are going to start with just the black and the white. Now, if we look at the the blue on there now. That blue is a little bit closer to purple than it is to green on that color wheel, or really color line, I guess. It's not a full wheel, but it is closer to purple. So I'm going to go with ultramarine blue versus, let's say, a phthalo blue or a primary blue. Ultramarine is going to be a little bit closer to purple there, so it makes it easier for me to mix a nice lavender color. 
So in this case, let's head over to my palette. I am going to start with just some black and white. Now I know based off that little color chart I showed you or the, the eyedropper tool, I need a lot more white than I do of black. One of the things I wanna point out, you said you had a hard time because you didn't mix enough color and then you try to remix it, you added more white and then that obviously lightens and you're working back and forth. What I would recommend doing, mix a small batch of the color you need figure out what colors you use to get to the, the end result you liked, then go back and use those same colors to make mix a larger batch. But I'm gonna be mixing a small batch here. If you knew you were gonna need a lot of any specific color, what you can do is get these little vials and they come even smaller, smaller. Is, the smaller it is, the better because the less air, the longer that paint is going to stay wet inside. I'll put a link to these in the video description. But once you get to the point where you figured out what colors you want, go ahead and mix a large batch with those colors and then store it if you need to. So if it is something where you use that color a whole lot, that can make your life a bit easier. But starting here, let's start with a smaller amount. We know black and white, because I want a grayish tone. I'm gonna go with a little bit more of the black. Oh, that may be a little bit too much. There we go. Nice mid gray tone, and I'm probably gonna lighten that as I add color. Now I'm gonna take some of my blue. Now one of the things I liked, the way that you mixed it, you started from the outside and pulled in. That's a good idea, because like right there, I had a lot of blue on my brush. So I was able to kind of mix some of that off. That was really good the way you did that. I'm gonna do the same thing with my magenta. Now, why am I using magenta and not red? Depending on the red that you use, if it has a little bit more of an orangey tint to it, it may give you a muddier color. So in this case, it's easier. I'm just using deep violet there. I've got a bit too much violet going on here. Pull some more blue in there. You can see I didn't need a whole lot of black to give me that more grayish tone, that muted tone. Now I wanna test that on a white piece of paper because that does not always come out the same as it looked like on the gray. And that looks a little bit more bluish gray to me. I'd like it to have a little bit more of a lavender color. Let's pull some more of that in. And even a little bit more white. Now let's see where we're at now. That looks pretty close. I think I still want even a little bit more magenta in there. Oh, that might be a bit too much. Let's mix some more of the blue and some more white. I'm going to lighten that up quite a bit. Now I'm going by the color on the screen on my phone, so it may not be totally accurate, but you get the idea on how I'm coming about mixing this. I think I need more blue though. Let's pull a bit more in there. But what is happening is even if I'm gonna want more than this, I've now got a really good idea of the colors that I can use to mix that, and then I can mix a larger batch. So let's see now. That looks pretty close. And again, I'm going off the, my just a screenshot from my phone, so it may not be exact, but this is the method that I would use to come up with that color. Now, a couple of tips as you're mixing. You will sometimes see people mix with a palette knife. A palette knife can work, but you're more likely to mix a whole lot of the wrong color. So I don't typically recommend it, especially for acrylics. So I mix with a brush, but as you're mixing, if you're spending a whole a lot of time stirring and mixing and it took you a lot longer than it took here, your brush will start to get very bloated and very full of paint. That color is probably not the color you want. That's why you're still mixing. So every so often, wipe your brush off. Just wipe as much paint off as you can on the paper towel and rinse that out and then go ahead and go back to mixing so that you're not just filled with the wrong color that keeps mixing in and making it harder for you to mix. Now, I wanna show you something kind of cool here. Let's say we take that blue. This is a naphthol crimson. It's a little bit of a muddy, it's not a super bright color. Now you did not, if you notice, have to use black when you mixed your color to get that more grayish tone. It's because you had already mixed, you basically mixed black in there when you mixed that reddish brown tone into your blue. So here, I'm gonna get to almost the same end and I shouldn't even need black just on using a different set of colors. And the reason that I'm showing you this, it may seem like I'm making it even more confusing, but the point is there are so many ways to get to a very, very similar end result. And your method of mixing is not bad. Just simplify the colors you're gonna work with. Like right now I decided I'm gonna try to mix that color from these two colors here. I'm using Ultra Roaring Blue, Naphthal Crimson. And let's make, it ha make that happen. And I should be able to get that near exact. just based on adjusting how much blue versus how much red. Look at those two, they're almost exact there. Close enough, 
totally different set of colors. Well, I guess not totally different. The blue and the white were the same. So what I'm doing here is just adjusting how much red with the blue versus how much violet of the blue. That's really the main difference. And then of course, in that violet case, I needed to mix a bit of black with it just to give me more of a grayish tone. Now, another color, when you are, are blending purples or violets, there is quidonkadonk red or in, the, well, Quinacridone, quinacridone, we know I can't say it, it's quidonkadonk. Quidonkadonk red here, that with ultramarine blue will give you the best purple as far as like a nice bright, bright purple. Much more so than any other red with any other blue. Now the thing is, this is a very bright, much more bold color. And so I may have to add a little bit of black with that to gray that up. Watch how, how just vivid these colors are. And that's because this specific red is not muting the blue like the naphthal crimson. The naphthal crimson was closer, a little bit more of a warm, like an orangey tone to it. And so I didn't need to add black to tone that down and get the grayish tone. But here, kind of like in your case, you had used the, I keep saying that you used burnt sienna. I'm not sure if that's what it was, but it was a reddish brown. That's why you didn't need black. But here, my color is gonna come out a bit too bold. So if I want to tone that down, I can just take my touch of black and give me that grayish tone. Oops, I got too much black in there. But you'll see, even with these different colors, I can still get it to be about the same. There we go. All three of those colors are about the same. They were all mixed with a different set of colors. So it's not an issue of finding one right color. It's about starting in your, in, in, especially for beginners, using Photoshop or any photo coloring app where you can kind of use that eyedropper tool and figure out, okay, is this more of a grayish tone? Is it a more pure color? If we're closer to the upper right hand corner there, we don't want black or white mixed in that. We want a pure color. So using that will help you to get a general idea. Do you want more grayish? Do you want more of a pure color? Is it really light? Is it really dark? Is it more white or more, more black if you do need a grayish tone? So that can really help. But don't get too hung up on, I needed to know the exact right colors. Three different, different reds, or in that case, violet, and a combination of do I need black or not black, white in all of those, but the end result, all those colors are the same. My biggest tip for you, when you are setting up your colors, choose whatever colors you wanna go with first. Don't put out every color you own, you're gonna make it harder for yourself. Choose just a handful, like for me, these would be the colors I would typically start with. If I knew that was the color I was going for, my black and my white, ultramarine blue, deep violet. But if even if you don't, have, let's say you don't have deep violet or that's not the color you want, you pick one of your reds and just make it work. Mix from a limited color palette. You're going to learn more about color mixing. You'll learn faster and you're going to make your life so much easier than continuously like, okay, now a little bit of green, now a little bit of red. As you found, not that you added green, but as you found, you used a whole lot more colors than I did and it worked. It's not that it's not going to work, it's that it makes it more difficult than it needs to be. Simplify your color palette and mix from whatever you have. And just know, this gets easier with time. The more you paint, the faster it'll be for you to mix all of your colors. You'll become more confident, you'll have mixed the wrong color, and don't be frustrated when you do mix the wrong color. You just learned what didn't work. That's a lesson all in its own. But the more you're painting, I know you've only done a couple of acrylics so far, which is crazy to me because they all came out so good, but the more you mix, and we're talking, you know, 20 paintings, 30 paintings later, it's really going to become very second nature to where you can take most sets of colors and make it look like any other set of colors just based on how you mix it. But that does come with experience. You can read color theory books. I would hold off on them if you're a beginner to painting because I think that they make things more confusing than they need to be. I think that it's easier for most students to just jump in, start mixing colors and see what happens. Once you've done several paintings like like that, then you can go back and read some color theory books and it'll make a lot more sense to you. But if you try to read them now, it's like starting off with math and starting with 
calculus instead of your basic division. So we don't wanna to go too advanced too, too soon. Let's keep it simple and just experiment and play with the paint. But Nick, you are on the right track. You didn't do anything what I would consider wrong because you ended up in the right place. I would just simplify, use fewer colors as you're, you're working to mix the color you want. Husband, what color does this dress look to you? Who cares, it's ugly. You're terrible at this game. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help YouTube to probably still not notify you when I have new content go up. So make sure to also click on the bell notification icon. I have new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday.